Hello and welcome to Chrome Computing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to format your images. Formatting images, you might want to do for so many different reasons. If you've got a website, for example, you'd want to format the image so you can make it a different size, um, as in the actual image size of the image. But more importantly, if you've got a website, you'd want to lower the actual size of the file. Um, but that could be for lots of different reasons as well. So I'm going to show you an app that you can use to do that. So if you go to Chrome, here. Now I've got it installed here. It's called Squoosh. If you haven't got it installed there, you can just type it in. Now Squoosh, you can trust Squoosh because it was created by Google, so it's fine. So if you go to there and it will come up straight away at the top there, Squoosh. It's changed recently. They've made gave it a nice new look. It didn't used to look like this, so this, that's all good. And the good thing is as well, um, they've now allowed you to install it as an app on your Chromebook or your Chromebox. And to do that, there's an install here. If you already had it installed on your Chromebook, that install button wouldn't be there. I've uninstalled it so I can show you on this video. So if you press install there, and install there like that, and then it's an app now. So it's no longer in the actual browser. It's an app. You don't have to do it that way. But what that does mean is that you've now got it as an app in your launcher down here. So if you go to your launcher, you can see there, Squoosh, you just opened it up. Or if you scroll down here, you should then see it there. There you go, Squoosh. So you've now got it as an app in your Chromebook. So you don't have to keep on visiting the web address. So if we open the app, and from here, you can see here drag or drop or paste so let's click on there and i've already downloaded a file here an image it's 489 kilobytes which is quite big certainly if you wanted to add it to a web page if we open that up there so it's full size as you can see that is quite big you can do that here so you can 100 percent it's quite a big image if you want to look at it, slow it down a bit like that. That's 64%, so you can see it on the screen. Now here, the good thing is you can go like that. Now this side of the image is how it would look before you did any of the compression. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here, you've got the edit option. First thing you've got is resize. We'll look at that a bit later. You've got reduced palettes, and then you've got your quality settings here, and you've got advanced settings. Generally speaking, I don't use any of these advanced settings, but by all means, you can have a mess about with them if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to show you the basic settings because they do really what you need. So it already shows you, as we saw earlier, the actual file size was around... Let me just have a look. Downloads, 489 kilobytes. So it's already showing you that the file size, if we change to MOS JPEG, will be 169 kilobytes. So that's a massive reduction of 66%, which is really good. Um, depending on what you're using it for, you may want it as a JPEG, you may want it as something else. So just to quickly show you, if we put the quality down, this would then obviously make the file size much smaller, but it will also reduce the quality. And I'm only doing this just to show you something. So we put it down to 20, and that's massively reduced it. And as you can see now, if you've got that slider there, this is the image before you do any of the changes. If you scroll it along, it will then show you what it will look like if you use the settings you've chosen. And as you can see, the quality of them two figurines there has gone down. You can see around the edges there and the detail is just not there. And if you scroll further, see how them icons here before you scroll and then you scroll, they do go down quite a lot, say with the text there. The reason for that, obviously, is because I've put it at quality 20 just to show you 
what this does. So I really like this because it means you can get the image quality exactly how you want without sacrificing too much. Because when it comes to formatting images, especially if you're doing it to decrease the file size, there is always going to be a sacrifice to some extent. So this lets you see what that would be. So let's put that back up to 75%, which is generally the standard that you'd reduce by. And there we go, we've got 169. Now if we drag that along, you can't really see too much of a difference in quality. It's still pretty decent, as you can see, but it's dramatically decreased the file size. Now you can do further things to reduce the file size. You could do reduce palettes. So if you click on that, and then at the moment there's 256 colors. If we reduce that down to say 128 colors, it doesn't really change the file size. So this is something you do have to mess around with until you get it perfect. Personally speaking, if I'm going to 128 colors from 256 colors, I'd want to see a difference in file size. If you don't see a dramatic difference in file size, but you do, when you go like that, because if you ever look at his cap very carefully, before we go over, it looks like that, you can see the difference. You put it maybe look clearly, but you can see the difference. Let's try it with these. You can see the icons, yeah. Look at a Facebook one beforehand, and then you go over, it has reduced the quality. Now, if we put that back up, bearing in mind it's 169 kilobyte, Put that back up to 256 colors it's 168 so it's actually one lower if you go over that hasn't dramatically reduced it so you, this is one thing you do need to do when you edit images you do have to play around to get it exactly how you want so there you found that reducing color to 128 isn't really helping you it's reducing the actual quality of the image but it's not reducing the size of the image. Let's see if we put it lower than that. No, that's actually increased it as well. So what you get from that is that reducing colors on a JPEG, MOS JPEG, isn't really helping you in this situation, which is fine. I'll show you where I reduce colors in a bit, but on this image, it wouldn't necessarily look that great. Um, so Moz JPEG there, You've got the other options. That's the original, 501 kilobytes. As you can see, there's no deterioration whatsoever. It just keeps exactly the same quality. And then you've got browser JPEG. That puts it down to 240 kilobytes. So browser JPEG, you can see it does reduce when you go over a little bit. So straight away, for me, 240 kilobytes for a browser JPEG, I would then decide if I needed a JPEG, well, I'm definitely going to be using a Moz JPEG because it reduced it down to 168. And then you can decide on the quality. If you're happy with that quality, it doesn't really change it much, if I'm being honest with you. It does a little bit. You can see there with a the Chrome icon there, it changes the quality. But if you're still not happy with that file size, you can then just lower this down. So say, let's go to 60%, and that lowers it down quite a bit. And then you can check again by just swiping. I always do that. I always go back to there. So I've got the original to see the deterioration. And yes, there's some, but again, you might be happy with that deterioration. Person speaking, I would be happy with that if I was gonna put this on my website. Um, I still wouldn't be happy with that file size though, if I'm being completely honest with you. So there's, there's a diff, we'll have to look at how we're gonna reduce that file size, which we will go into. We could lower the quality again, but the more you lower the quality, you will dramatically see it. Let's go right down so you'll see what I mean. Yeah, 
see, I wouldn't be happy with that. You can see the icons, they're, they're not nice at all. And around the text here has gone all strange. It's gone down to 58 kilobytes, but it, it, it's one of the things with images, you've got, you've got to sacrifice, but how much sacrifice do you want to make? So what I would do here, I would be putting that back up to 75 like that. And this is not the ideal image to show you, but you do have other options that you can use. So I'll quickly show you what I mean. You've got PNG. Now PNG is another popular format for the web. Websites use PNG as an image compression as well. Now, as you can see here, it's massively increased the size to 2.4, well, 2.14 megabytes compared to Mars JPEG, which was 168 kilobytes. So you can see straight away for this type of image, PNG isn't necessarily going to be what you want to use. Um, and I will show you why because first of all, the quality is great, as you can see, but the actual size of the file, you've, you've not lowered it at all. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you a different picture for when PNG is better. So essentially anything what's got detail like this, where it's a, a detailed image and all of these little bit of detail here, the best option for you is JPEG, if I'm being honest with you. WebP is great. WebP is really good. The problem with WebP is not all browsers at the moment accept WebP. So you have to upload it as a JPEG and then you have to put a compression in afterwards that you use a tool that then compresses it into WebP server side, which is a totally different thing. But WebP, I'll just quickly show you. WebP is great. So if you're not using it for websites, WebP, you can see the quality there. It's gone down to 138 kilobytes. Scroll along. You don't re you do lose a bit of quality there. Be nice with you. Not too much, but you can see it's smaller than it was on the JPEG. But again, you can mess about with the settings here on WebP as well. But I'm going to show you when you'd use PNG. Now PNG, like I says, really large file, 2.14. If you load them colors, it will look atrocious or should do. So it's still 1.29 megabytes, so it's lowered it, but look how poor the quality of the images now, you've lost all them colors. So I'll show you what sort of file image you'd use for PNG. So just click there to close that. So it hasn't changed that file at all. And then click on there and I'll bring up a different file. So let's open up this. So this one here is a classic image where you would use PNG over JPEG because there's no detail to the image. It's all flat graphics. So on JPEG, you can see at 75, it's 52 kilobytes, which is, it's actually gone up in size there. And the reason why is because I've already, this image I've already decreased previously, but I'll show you if you change that to PNG. Now you've got PNG there, browser PNG, 81 kilobytes, but you've also got Oxy PNG, which I think is slower, yeah, 23 kilobytes. So just changing the actual PNG style, and you can see that there's no deterioration whatsoever. Go to browse a PNG, and again, no deterioration. But what you can do with PNG is you can do reduce the palettes. Now, bearing in mind, if you have a look at these colors, what colors is so there's one, two, three. So there's not many at all. So reduce the palette there. So it's currently on 81.6 kilobyte colors. You can reduce that right down. So put it down to 24, just to show you. Reduce the size and you can see 
is up to no deterioration. So for that, I would then decide, right, I'm going to use Oxy PNG to lower it even more, down to 20 kilobytes. And you can see, you need to be careful because it could change the color. Because there's so many, there's hardly any colors in this. It's not having any impact on the quality. So let's try going down to eight. Now, if I quickly go over, it is changing the quality. You might not be able to see too much, but see this border here, this white border. Looks fine. But even though we've gone down to eight, so there's, if you go over there, you can now see there's a slight jag there. So that's changed the quality. You might be happy with that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that there. So you have to play, and you can see it's changed the font quality as well. It's a bit more jagged. So you'd have to change this until you've got to a quality you're happy with. And for me personally speaking, I'd normally go to about 36. And then you can see it hasn't deteriorated that there. And it's not deteriorating the text. Maybe it is a bit, but nothing too visual. So there we go. I'd be happy with that. 50% reduction. And bearing in mind, this image I've already done reduction on previously. I wasn't expecting to show you this image, but I wanted to show you the PNG. Um, so the, the differences would be much more if you hadn't already done a compression on it. But I've still compressed it more doing it again because... This it was uploaded to YouTube, so I didn't really have to put too much effort into it. If I was putting this on my website, for example, I would be using this compression right here now. And you can see the file size difference. So that's when you'd use PNG on flat graphics for images like we had open this one. Take it out a bit you wouldn't want to use PNG because it just makes the file size too big. So I'd definitely stay with JPEG straight away. You look at the size, under 69 kilobytes for Moz JPEG. Browser JPEG, I believe, is going to be bigger. Yeah, 230. So straight away, I'd go, well, I'm definitely going to be using Moz JPEG. And I'll mess about with this. If I wasn't going to be uploading this to um, a website and I just wanted, I still needed to consider the file size for whatever reason, then I would most likely go with WebP because that will lower it even more. So as you can see, it's lowered it even more. And that's before you get into changing any of these options here. So you'd lower the quality. WebP is quite good when it comes to lowering the quality, but it doesn't dramatically change the outcome. And that's why WebP is so great. So it is really good. Um, again, I think WebP is a Google technology. Um, the reason why it's not great for websites at the moment is that there's still browsers um, which don't support WebP at the moment. So it's an issue. So that's why they won't. Hopefully in the future it will become that way. And then you'll see that most images on the internet will most likely be WebP, unless they are then flat graphic-based images like I showed you, which you'd still want to use PNG ideally. So yes, this is showing you again colors that's reduced obviously we're on web p now so this wouldn't necessarily be great for the website but again as you can see well there is deterioration there yeah so you, it's about playing about getting it just how you want it like that okay so that's the actual compression side of things let's change this back to Mars jpeg I would leave it on 75%. Bearing in mind, we've lowered that from 495 kilobytes down to 167. What I would want to do is lower it even more. The way you do that is this far, this image is massive, as you can see, the full image size is that. So to lower it even more, I would go resize. Click on that. Now the current width is you've got all these methods now i'm not going to pretend for one second i don't know what these are i don't you'll have to mess about with them um 
you've got the preset there. So you could just say, I want to reduce it by 50%. And then you can see it's changed the width from the height by 50%. It's better doing it that way than changing these yourself because the reason you can obviously do that, it's entirely up to you. But if you change the actual image length and then change the height, but they're not in, they're, they're, if, if you don't lock them in, then I'll show you what I mean. If you, in, if you put the width to 500, you can see it changes the height for you there. So it locks it in. Don't know if there's an option not to lock it in. Oh, maintain aspect ratio. So take that tick box off there. Let's go back to what it was. I think it was 1920. Uh, sorry about this. 1920, 1920, and it's kept that height at 1279. Yeah, so that's what you'd want to do. If you take off maintain aspect ratio, it won't do that, so you can change the width, say, oh, to 1,000, but it's then going to keep the height. Press Tab to take effect. It's then going to keep the height of that, and you don't necessarily know if that's going to make the image look how you want it to look. So put it to 500. Just trying to show you. It's not doing it, is it? I think you will obviously get these now and again. Yeah, see how it's changed it. 500, 600, it's changed it down to 30 kilobytes in size. So that's massively changed it down. But you can also see, look at the quality of the image has dramatically changed as well. And that's bearing in mind before doing any compression. Let's have changed that. Let's have a look. Yeah, I don't think the compression. That's JPEG, choose quality. Oh no, they, they've kept the compression and the resize. So they've changed um, Squoosh recently. So they've improved it quite a lot. It never used to do this resize and the compression at the same time. So let's go back to start and do it from the beginning. So click on there, click on the image. It's 499 kilobytes before compression. So straight away, we're going to decide we want to resize it by 50%. You can even put your own resize in there. As long as you've got maintain aspect ratio on there, it will drop the height as well. So put 1000 in there and you can see the height also drops as well. That's dramatically changed the file size there. Now, for me personally, on my website, I have 1,200 and my height, I am going to have to change the aspect ratio because all of my images are 675. So that's fine because I'm not dramatically changing it. It's on 799. I'm changing it to 675. So it will change the image a bit, but nothing dramatically. So there we go. So 1,200 by 675. It's gone down to 66.5 kilobytes from the original 495 kilobytes. So you can see that's pretty good. We're going to go with Mars JPEG. And then there's a few other options. Obviously, you could rotate the image like that. But what I'm going to do is download it. So click on that. And it will download it as a JPEG. And that's it. Quick look, and there it is. It has over, um, has it overwritten? No, it hasn't. There's the original there in my downloads folder, and it's saved it in my drive because I try and save most of my files in Google Drive rather than locally. And as you can see, it's now 65 kilobytes. That's dramatically lowered the size of the image. So Squoosh is great for doing that. It's great for changing the file size of your images. So I hope this has helped. So I appreciate the last few minutes. I've got myself a bit flustered because they have changed this. So I didn't realize you could do both of these at the same time. Um, but have a play around. There's loads of options I've still not gone through. Um, so it's just really just to let you know that this tool is out there for you. And it's great whether you're using a Chromebook or you're using another computer, a different operating system, but you've got Chrome, 
you can use this, just type in Squoosh and you can add it to your toolbar in your Chrome browser there, or you can add it as an app on your Chromebook there. Okay, so I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for future videos 